Welcome to the Daily Telegraph NRL podcast. Adam Mobbs here with Fatima Kadu and Paul Crawley. And geez, what a weekend of rugby league. I, it started off very impressively with the Broncos, but a little lopsided, but they more than made up for it with the controversy and the close finish in that Knights Raiders game. Dear me. Oh, both the elimination finals were just so intense. Like, they're the best games. Two aren't points yeah. and one point, and it showed you what desperation means when, when guys are out there and they're playing for their season. Those two games were just gripping. They were, you, you couldn't sit down watching them. You just sat there <laughs> or stood there the whole game, and it was just incredible action. Oh, so, so tough. Broncos twenty six, Storm nil, impressive. Panthers thirty two, Warriors six. Roosters thirteen, Sharks twelve. It's bye bye Cronulla and Knights thirty, Raiders twenty eight. Your Canberra side are out for Tima. What was your what was your highlight of the weekend? Uh, the Knights Raiders game. You know, people saying the kind of final that we'll talk about for years to years to come. Just the you know, Newcastle maybe were a little bit overawed by the occasion to start the game, but you know, both sides clearly came to play. Both sides played with a lot of spirit. It was tough. It was physical. There were huge hits. Um, like crawls, I, as, a, as a Raiders fan, I wasn't emotionally ready for that game because I can't say, <laughs> look, I've tipped them just about every single game this year. And this was the one that I thought, oh, you know what, I think the Knights have got them here. I wasn't overly confident. And then when I realized, holy hell, like Canberra have come to play, my nerves just like shot through the roof and I couldn't sit still. And I was walking in and out of the, the lounge room. And yeah, I was just... I, so close, so far. Um, we'll, um, we'll get into. I was going to say we'll, we'll uh, bite into the oh. Jack Wyden incident, but uh, yeah, that was probably the turning point in the game. So, yeah, yeah. Geez, uh, Ricky can prepare a team for a final, mm. can't he? You know, mm. they, the Knights would have been expecting an ambush. They were talking about it all week, and still did not handle it early. It was unbelievable, and like they said in the commentary yesterday, the early try the score the Knights scored probably gave them a false sense of security because mm. the, the Raiders were so up for it. They, they ran so hard. They tackled so hard. It was, it was bruising and it was enthralling. And they had the game there to be won until the bite. Mm. Yeah. And it completely changed the momentum. The Knights from there, I think they went and scored four unanswered tries. The Raiders again fought back, sent it into extra time. How good was the extra time? Yeah. But, um, but unfortunately, you know, the... The Raiders shot themselves in the foot with a couple of crucial errors, mm. crucial Moments, brain explosions. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep, yep. And and that moment with they went to the video referee, they captain challenge on the strip that Tom Starling was judged to have made in that. And then I think the I think the Knights then went yeah. on and scored back to back tries and blew the game open a little bit. And then the Raiders fought back. Well, what did you make of that one? Of that decision? Oh, oh, you know, you're allowed to wrap the ball up, and mm. I thought I thought. Bradman Best was dropping to the ground at the time, and mm. yeah, it, it's tough. It's, that's a tough call. Yeah, there's, you know. there, there, there's, there was a few tough moments um, against the Raiders. I thought the the Rapana Ford pass called Ford pass to Elliot Whitehead that mm. would have been a try. Look, that was line ball at worst. Mm. Um, um, the the try that they scored earlier in the game where it was sent up as a no try and it appeared on the side angle as um, the ball had Touch. maybe touched the ground yeah. with the point yeah. of the ball. Again, I hate that rule. Mm. I hate how a referee on the field is forced to send that up with a with his call. If, if he's not 100% sure, yeah. why not send it to the bunker and let the bunker determine on probability of the best angles? Yes. Mm. Yeah. You know, we saw it with the, the Sharks game too. Cameron McInnes was denied a try, which probability said he grounded he that grounded. ball. But yes. because it's sent up as a no try... There has to be sufficient evidence, which... And how would the referee know? And to, he's, exactly. he's got to make a call, but how is mm. he supposed to know? Well, it's an unfair, you know? it's an unfair bias against the team because mm. if that's sent up, if McInnes is sent up as a try, mm. which is the old benefit of the doubt rule, well, then that's a try. Mm. You know, and the Sharks win the game. And it's the same with the Raiders here. And the Ford pass call was a shocker, I thought. But anyway, um, yeah, there was some, there was some really, you know controversial moments but but for mine you talk about the highlight I love the Raiders game the Raiders Knights yeah. it was a ripper but for mine Tedesco and Luke Keery's charge downs oh. you know at the death to win the game given the scrutiny those two players had been under this year um, you know Teddy the way Teddy's fought back from origin look I, I 
led the charge thinking he deserved to be dropped during the Origin series. But you said it to me the other day, Mobsy, the his form now compared to his form back then tells you how far he's turned the tide. Oh, hasn't he just? I, I rewound that footage because I thought Teddy's offside there and they've missed this. He's, mm. he's charged out of the line early and there's no way he's got there in time. Mm-hmm. I went back. Nope. Foot behind the... He was yeah. there. He was on side. And he just busted a gut to get there. And then I couldn't quite get the wide-angle one on the Kiri one. No, there was no, no, no <laughs> shot there. But he was... Um, wasn't he charging along Kiri yeah. to Raider Knot? So, um, listen, we've got to keep going with this Raiders-Knights game. The Jack White and Bite charge. So, he's been referred straight to the judiciary on Tuesday night, which yep. you think would be a minimum of four weeks if he's found guilty of the incident with Tyson Gamble. Um so that four weeks or whatever he incurs will be served when he joins South Sydney next season. Little welcoming present for them. <laughs> and then hey, it's just keep on coming yeah. for South. Oh, <laughs> and Tyson Gamble obviously doing the the, the code, uh, abiding by the code. What happens on the field stays on the field. Bit but late. He, he protested a bit too much for him to come out then and say that after the yeah. game. I think. He said and it in front of two million people. A little bit <laughs> well, late. Yeah. And 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 also the the line from. Jack, he wasn't really refuting it when he said, he, "Sir, he lays on the back of my head and pushes down. What am I meant to do?" And just, I Not didn't buy it. Yeah, we well, got to say, man, he he pushed the teeth in. I didn't do it, but uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if you can defend it. Um, they're going to try. I'm, I'm assuming. So we'll mm. see what happens. Yeah, I, I think it might be a matter of. Um, you know, how long he does get. You know, we've seen, what, four weeks up to 12 weeks for biting. Um, we saw in the NRLW there was the first ever send-off and that was a, a biting incident, which also raises the question, like, if we've seen how it is treated in the NRLW, why was it different in the NRL game? The, the mm. games are both adjudicated by the same rule book, So there is a precedent set for something like that already this year. So I think Canberra, you know, Crawls was saying there were a couple of, you know, calls that went against them, but... You know, um, I, I, they were lucky that that call went in their favour. They they crumbled. Mm. Um, I think just as much as it galvanised the Knights and they went on to score, you know, four tries, I think, in that period, um, the Raiders sort of, I think it, like, rattled the Raiders a little bit, mm. that incident too. So, yeah, it, it's going to be a hard one for Wyden to defend. I mean, there's not many times, you know, sometimes where you see allegations of, like, you know, whether someone's, being eye gouged or bitten or whatever but you know when they showed the the tight angle of um gamble's arm like you could almost see the imprint of the mouth guard and then the imprint of the of the bottom teeth so um yeah uh, you know before the game i worried that there would be a brain explosion moment from canberra because they are absolutely capable of that mm. sort of thing and i thought it would have been something against caelan ponga when them sort of trying to you know uh, throw him off his game um but yeah it came in the form of a bite and um it was a bit of a brain explosion by jack because it did that period after is probably what cost them the game mm. yeah. it's impossible to defend um it was there for all to see. He opened his mouth. He shut his mouth. Um, the the look on Tyson Gamble's face at that moment, he, he yeah. screamed mm. in, in pain. Mm. You could see it. The, the mark was there. Um, it it's, defies belief why he wasn't sent from the field because, you know, there's, there's precedent there. Kevin Proctor was sent off and suspended mm. for four weeks for biting Sean Johnson back in um, 2020. Um, and in, in this instance, like Ashley Klein was there, it appeared that though, as though Ashley Klein had, had got a good look at it, but he said, I didn't see it. Mm. Yeah. He, he referred it to the bunker. Can you see conclusive proof? I think everyone could, could see conclusive proof, mm. but they, they decided not to go for the call, which was, which was strange. And what will be really interesting now is because if they cannot compel Tyson Gamble to front the judiciary and – you know, say they either can't, way. But don't you think uh, the way that um, Tyson protested during the game will be used yeah. a- against Jack? Because from memory, I think Klein asked him on a number of occasions, like, are you making this allegation? And each mm. time Gamble was adamant saying, he he this slobber, yeah. yeah, this is not sweat, this is slobber. He was saying, like, mm. look at my arm. So, so you, you can't change your, your, your mind though, Mobsy, because it was said in front of live TV. No, of course. He was questioned by the referee and, and, and ultimately... If, if Tyson Gamble was to now say, um, I don't want to go through with this, it wasn't a bite, well, then surely he 
Mm. He should be charged for bringing the game into disrepute. Yeah. Mm. Because that happened on live TV. It, it turned the game. And if it was a false allegation, mm. well then, yeah. mate, you've got to pay the price for that. Yeah. So the, the point being with that is that the match review committee's looked at it. Now the NRL judiciary is going to have the same information before it that mm. the bunker had when the bunker decided not to send him off mm. but to put him on report they're going to work off that same bit of information as to what they do with the result now so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens on tuesday night but uh that jack whiten's last game as a raider which is a disappointing way for him to go out and you know leave the raiders with a little bit of work to do for next season just to try and find that that right halves combination and there's not a lot of money in this um, there's not a lot of talent, sorry, around the, in free agency at the moment, is there? So, you know, they've, they've got a couple of good young kids. They bowed out in New South Wales Cup at the weekend against a really good Warriors team, but that New South Wales Cup team's got some talent in there too. Guys like Chevy Stewart and mm. Xavier Savage sitting there on the wing. and um, Ethan Strange, mm. they're trying to get Ethan Sanders from Parramatta. Um, but, you know, look, you, you, you're looking to replace a a 10-year first grader, a Clive Churchill medal winner, a, a representative player that will win his way into any rep side a when he's at winner. his best. Mm. Um, and Jack was incredibly brave yesterday and he played brilliantly. It was just that 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 moment. And also he, he gave away the penalty for the on Ponga. the shot on Ponga, Ponga that yeah. led to the two-point victory. Yeah. Um, he goes to South Sydney on a... on a what, Is it a three-year deal? Mm. Um, he has... He starts with a... A suspension cloud hanging over him. He also has a court case coming up in in later October for the incident at um, his 30th birthday with Latrell that they've both pled not guilty to. But you know, it. Um, I guess that becomes South Sydney's problem now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And and that that cloud moves to the Rabbitohs who don't need any more controversy in their lives. <laughs> don't they yeah. just? <laughs> oh, yeah. Dear but me. it is a hard one, Mobsy, mm. because the Raiders do struggle to. Um, to sign elite players. Mm. It, a lot of people don't want to live in Canberra. Mm. You know, when they, they had their success running to the, was it the 2019 grand final? It was on the back of the, the English recruits. Yeah. Mm. And they have to build from the ground up this club. So I, I don't think it's going to be a, a quick fix, but I, I, I think the Raiders would be inclined to want to back their juniors. Unless you mm. can get an absolute elite player, I think the Canberra fans would be more than happy to back a kid like Strange coming through or whether they end up getting Ethan Sanders, then, mm. yeah. then going and buying a, a second-rate player on overpaying, top yeah. Overpaying, overpaying yeah. and getting yourself into a cycle. It just won't work. Yeah. It's because, not going to work. And, and, and Ricky, you know, for, for all the knocks on Ricky and, and you know, his colourful ways on the sideline and the fact that, you know, he can be so abrasive on, on occasions, we saw yesterday what a great coach he is and how he got that team... Let's be honest, that roster doesn't rate with Parramatta. It doesn't mm. rate with North Queensland. It doesn't rate with South Sydney. And and for them to be fighting for their lives in that game yesterday mm. shows you how dedicated those players are mm. to the jersey. Well, look at the forwards that they were missing. And you're coming up against a pack that, you know, the Saifidis are great. Leo Thompson's been in great form. Frizz has Fr- been incredible. Tyson yeah. Frizzell's been terrific. Mm. And... They held their own. The, the, yeah. You know, I expected the Knights to roll over the top of them. And, and when they kicked away to 28-16 on some really nice right-edge plays with, you know, using the speed of, of Dom Young and, and Kale and Ponga to break them open, I thought, oh, well, that's it. The Raiders, yeah. have, mm. the Raiders have shot their mm. shot and that's it. But yep. they fought their way back. And in, in the last seven minutes of that game, there was only going to be one winner. Unless mm. it was a draw, there was only going to be one winner. And that was the Raiders. They kept knocking and knocking and knocking on that door. And they scored that try to equal things up. I thought, geez, I wouldn't begrudge them going ahead again and scoring on the next play because they were throwing everything at Newcastle, who I think thought defended really well. Um, and that's, for a team that's won 10 straight games, they've got to now refocus and, and get ready for the Warriors next week because that's going to be another mm. knockdown drag out affair, isn't it? Yeah. And, and Hastings won't be there. Mm. Mm. And um, his kicking game is crucial um, to them and it's going to be tough backing up after an extra time epic game like it was yesterday yeah. to now go across to New Zealand without your halfback and you know backing up from that it's going to be a, a, a big effort from the the Knights to get through that one but they've been incredibly brave and resilient and to come back and like you said win mm. 10 games in a row when it looked like their coach was gone for all money and oh. you know there were huge question marks over their star players and their commitment 
and it's been a fabulous story, mm. arguably the best story of the season. Yeah, yeah it has been. Um, just before we move on to the Knights, uh, Mobsy, you mentioned the Raiders forwards. I think for me as a, as a Raiders fan, and I'm speaking with my, <laughs> with my uh, lime green glasses on, but um, yeah, considering Josh Papali was out for that game, their young forwards, Arda Mariotta in particular, mm. oh my God, he was brilliant, mm. you know, charging from the back fence after 85 minutes. Emre Gula, who at times had struggled to, you know, keep his spot in that team. Joe Tarpany was absolutely brilliant. So, I mean, and, you know, um, Schiller, James Schiller sort of raised yeah. a few eyebrows last week, but did a brilliant job coming into that side, handled the pressure brilliantly. So, yeah, there are some green shoots um, for the for Canberra next year. But, yeah, just um, just on the night side, we haven't even really touched on, on how brilliant P- Ponga played. Mm. You know, everyone was talking about his shoulder. Would he be able to hold up? He was physical. You know, mm. he wasn't afraid um, to take on, take on um, the game defensively. You know, went for high balls, no, you know, zero self-preservation. Um, and then when Hastings left the field, you know, you saw the way he switched up his game a little bit, roamed both sides of the field, really hurt the Raiders down the right side a little bit there. So it was, you know, the, the Knights as a team were brilliant, but they don't get across the line if Ponga's not there yesterday. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think their performance was just about as brave as the Roosters because they got hit with injuries during the game. They, you know... A really hostile crowd down there, and they had to claw for every bit, didn't they? The Roosters, and in the end, it was game management. You know, they the the Sam Walker field goal was terrific. I thought I don't want to be too critical. Critical. I think Cronulla botched it. They kept the yeah. last couple of minutes when they're going for that field goal. They didn't know what they were doing. They were either going for a try, or if that didn't work out, we're going to go for the field goal. Plan for one or the other. Don't run the ball to two meters out then pitch it out ten meters for a drop goal attempt. It doesn't work. You're giving him ten meters to come and get you. Do it the uh, Roosters did pull up on the 10 throw it back to the 20 where Sam Walker is make the defence run 20 metres you mm-hmm. know and oh, I don't know they they had the opportunity there a couple of times to even that up and I yeah I was disappointed with the way they finished that off the Sharks yeah it's um interesting what is this sec- second year in a row they've sort of gone out in straight sets and you know, you, you look at their side, they've got a lot of strike, you know, um, the forwards do a decent job, but I don't know, there's just something, you know, you watch them play and yes, they've got Nico Hines, yes, he's the re- reigning Dalian player of the year and he's found some form recently, but there's just something about that footy team, I f- you know, they're missing a bit of something, whether it's an X factor, um, but, you know. And he's it, not I, the only club looking for one of those, don't <laughs> worry. I think you need to take into account too that Nico is um, only a two-year halfback mm. and he will get better you know like it, it takes time to learn to handle that moments he started the game in wonderful form mm. he had like five runs early and set up a try and and yeah they did lose their way and when the roosters were down without Manu had left and Suwali was off and they had him exposed on on the roosters right edge and and Blake Braylon remember that play where he came mm. up he looked left and then turned right yeah and it was just an opportunity bombed. Yep. Mm. And there were moments like that, but on the flip side of that, the Roosters' courage and their ability to handle adversity. You know, they'd lost Manu to a hamstring. They'd mm. lost Suwali at halftime to a head knock. Billy Smith had gone off the field at one point. Tedesco gets sin-binned. Mm. And they had um, Siwa Wong playing in the centres and Angus Crichton. I thought... You know, across the board, you, there were so many heroes for the Roosters. Yeah. Mm. Victor Radley, um, Lindsay Collins was enormous. Uh, Brandon Smith had another wonderful game. Yeah. His charges through the centre made huge difference. Sam mm. Walker mm. stood up when they needed him. And Kiri and Tedesco, like, there were so many heroes. Like, it was yeah. just a performance that, that all season we've been looking for the Roosters to jump out of this slump. And I thought on, the, on, on Saturday night... You saw the culture of the roosters, the the roosters' way that they always took a talk about. Mm. It stood tall. Yeah, well, I think Robbo said after the game, it was you know we won that on character, and that was obvious. You know, just from the charge downs from Tedesco and and Kiri. Um, but he also like you know t- you touched on Siwa Wong and you know guys like um, Billy Smith, um, Terrell May. Um, you know some of those younger guys in the team who, you know, Sandon Smith who've Mm, come in and, and, you know, um, Robbo said 
they've injected that bit of youth and that was probably what was that that kind of exuberance and that cockiness and the arrogance of youth you know and that was probably something that they had been missing because they are such an experienced football team mm. um and it's funny because everyone says they're the, the glamour club and yes they've got tedesco and kiri and you know and and brandon smith but you know, there's all these other guys, like these unheralded guys that I'm, you know, probably on close to bargain contracts that have been incredible for them all year and have shown up when they needed to, you know, like apparently Siwa Wong was joking about because he's filled in at the centre and at centre and done a really good job. He's like, oh, am I playing fullback next mm. week? You know, and he puts Sandon Smith in fullback and he does, he gets the job done. So, you know, it's one of those ones where, and it's, a, it's similar to, to the Knights, right? Had a really sort of, you know, up and down, inconsistent start of the year, and they, that turnaround in form shows that that hard work had that they'd done the hard work in preseason. For whatever reason, that connectivity and cohesion just wasn't there. But when it clicks, you know, it shows that this this is a footy team that had actually worked hard all year, but it just wasn't working for them. Mm. And then when it does work for them, they've got all this momentum on their back. You know, so um, it's going to be a pretty good clash against the Melbourne Storm side. That was. Um, pretty disappointing on the weekend. Oh, isn't that – you talk about form guides in horse racing crawls, but what about this? The the Storm could not have played worse. I mean, Brisbane were amazing, but I thought the, the Storm's key men were exceptionally poor, and Craig Bellamy said much the same. The Roosters fought and ground their way to a win, but no Manu this week, no Swaliki this week. They're oh, – you know, that, it's, that's a tough ask to come back from that. But in saying that, geez – Melbourne weren't great, so can they bounce back? Where, where do you see this one going? Well, the Storm lose uh, Ryan Pappenhausen, they, the oh. Xavier Coates. Oh, yeah, that was terrible. Um, they're big guns, like you said, Mobsy. I don't think I've seen uh, Harry Grant play a worse game. Munster just hasn't lived up to the expectation. We all know when he's at his best, he's the best big game player in the game, but he's, he, mm. he's got to stand up mm. this week. Yeah. Jerome Hughes, um, back from injury, didn't have a good game. They're... The question marks over their centres um, mm. and what the hell's going on with Justin Ollum. Like, Craig Bellamy would not have him out of that team if there wasn't a very good reason. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No one can find out what the reason is. Uh, we hear it's, you know, form. I'd, mm. I'd question that. Mm. I, I think young um, Rafael Logo, it'll be interesting to see if he comes in this week mm. as the X Factor off the bench. And, and the other thing that I found a little bit strange too is that when, when Nelson Asofa Solomona gets on the field, he makes such a difference. Doesn't he? But it just seemed an eternity before he got out there. Mm. And, and as soon as he got on the field, he made like, I, I just don't think they can afford to keep him on the bench. Yeah. yeah. They need a big start against the Roosters. Mm. Mm. And he yeah. was, geez, wasn't he devastating? Even there was that time um, he made that bust through the middle, like, stopped by about four blokes a couple of metres out, and they threw the ball left, and it was that brilliant cover defence from the Broncos. Mm. Uh, Adam Reynolds was there and Selwyn Cobbo was there and then I, uh, I think it was Billy Walters. They ended up bundling him in a touch. He dropped the ball before he went out and that scramble defence was there all game for the Broncos. And um, you, well, think, you think, why wasn't, you know, geez, you wanted more of that from Nelson because mm. he attracts players, they suck in that defence and make make Brisbane scramble, and mm. which they did really well the other night though. Which they did really well and that was what, what Craig Bellamy pointed to as being the biggest difference, not only for Brisbane this year but in that game. He said it was just th their defence, you know, we just had nothing, like we, we we had no answers to their defence. So, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I, I agree with Crawls. I think, you know, if you look at before Pappenhausen um, came back, uh, they were sort of playing like, like a one-two punch with Bronson Garlic and, and Harry Grant off the bench. But I think considering how badly they struggled to score any points and we saw Suafa Alogo, just how exciting he is, how electric he is. Um, and it probably, you know, I mean, I'm sure Robbo will do his homework, but, you know, n not necessarily a lot of video about what he can do. Like he potentially is a genuine X factor and a threat off the bench because they do need something in attack. I think um, what Ricky Stewart said about his senior players too before yesterday's game, he really needed his senior players to stand up and lead the way. Well, that's mm. what the Storm need this mm. week. It has to be Harry Grant, it has to be Jerome Hughes and it has to be Cameron Munster if they are going to win. Because yeah. we saw from the Roosters, it was the same thing. It was the senior mm. guys that, that led the way for the others to follow. What, yeah. I, th what I found really interesting though in Bellamy post-match was um, he was brutally, brutally scathing in his assessment of you know the spine, you know, saying 
they played like they'd never played with each mm. other before. But at the same time, he was very calm about it. Mm. You know, normally we see a bit of, you know, there's a bit of anger, there's a bit of frustration. Um, a bit of spittle flying yeah, somewhere. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I noticed that he was actually quite, I thought, well, that's a worrying sign. But they've been that sort of side this year, haven't they? Like it's not, it hasn't been the clinical storm of old where, mm. where you know, the difference between their best and worst was this minor yeah. difference. It's this year there's been extremes. Like go mm. back to the, the game against Newcastle where they were ahead by 12 points and then lost the game in a pretty big score and then from there they bounced back and found form. Maybe that's what Bellamy's hoping for this week because yeah. I still think the Storm, while there are some weaknesses and they're not the overall side that they used to be, those three key players are good enough. There's a lot more improvement from that performance at the weekend. Yep. Whereas, mm. you know, I wonder how much better the Roosters can be from what they were at the weekend. Mm. I think there's a lot of... It. Improvement, but you know, especially with Manu out, yeah, yeah, as well. yeah. yeah. But like, the credit to the Broncos, and I know that's a cliche, but it took 78 minutes for the Melbourne Storm to get a line break, yeah, the other night. And mm. it was that short ball that um, Tarek Sim, Sims busted the line, looked headed for the line, and Reese Walsh grasped him with a tackle, and they held him out again. They were, you know, there's with two minutes to go, you're up 26 0. You wouldn't forgive them for going, okay, there's a consolation mm. try in there. But they mm. were that determined to keep that shut out. And that, that's such a mental a mental boost for the Broncos to go on, okay, well, <coughs> these are the standards we've set and now we've got to try and keep up for these. Because you know, in a fortnight, fortnight's time, they're playing the winner of Warriors Nights up there at a sold-out Suncorp. It's going to be amazing. And they were, you know, as, as much as we, we spoke there about Cronulla maybe not icing the big moments, but... Adam Reynolds was just... Mm. It's just like it. I, I said Terrific. in my column today, it's um, it's starting to sound like a broken record, but every time you see him play, you, you, I can't help but continue to think, what the hell were you thinking, South oh. Sydney? Yep. Like, it's just every yep. time. Mm. He is exactly what they didn't have this year. Yep. Yep. His calmness, his composure, his ability to just ice the moments and come up with the right play at the right time. Mm. And... He, he's out there and he hadn't played, was it four or five weeks or whatever it was? You would not know. And I was a little bit concerned that Reynolds had been shown up on a couple of occasions this year from speed with Nick mm. Hines and Kalen Ponga burning for pace one day. And I just thought I was waiting for Munster to do that. Mm. Mm. But, mate, he just went out there and put on a masterclass and, again. And where, where the Storm either kicked too shallow or kicked too deep and gave away seven tackle 20-metre restarts, that bomb that he put up, you see that when they f they did the slow motion, one, he got under the belly of that mm. ball and set it up. And Nick Meany had no chance of catching it. Uh, the dropout was another one which was terrific. But yeah. then just but the kicks that were inside that five meter zone where the storm got it and Brisbane just piled on the kick chase and him often leading it as well to just put him on the back foot and make him making him work out of their own area. You know, because he's playing the best football of his life mm. yeah, at thirty three years mm. of age. He's he's one game away from another grand final. Yep. And, and he'll and be the difference. He'll be the difference. He's, he's the guy that's got him there. Yep. They've got so much talent across the park. Honestly, mm. like Herbie Farmworth and Tony Staggs mm. and Reese Walsh and the wingers, like they're just a phenomenal football side. Yeah. But he is the he is the key. Billy Walters, what a game he had too. Yeah. Mm. Didn't he outshine um, oh. Harry Grant? Yeah. Just yep. yeah, well, p big performance. So as a neutral, I think it's got to be a Panthers Broncos grand final for the two best teams to sit there yep. and see, you know, see how the teams go at each other, see what. Ivan throws out because you've seen his his coaching record it speaks for itself but you know the the way that he tears teams apart but seeing what Kevy did the other night it was just that was such a clever game plan mm. and, and everything clicked so um were the Broncos more impressive for yours for Timor or, or Panthers what did you think Oh um I think maybe the the Broncos just but you know we've been waxing lyrical about Adam Reynolds um Nathan Cleary was just as you know, masterclass type and just as impressive in that game as well. You know, just like Reynolds, you know, pulled all the right reins, you know, and executed, you know, every option that he went with. And what, I mean, we've been talking so much about how good their kicking games are, how, how brilliant game managers they are, but both of them have actually been pretty good defensively in the last mm. um, in the last little bit. So, um, and that's part of both of their games that they probably don't get a lot of credit for. Cleary's um, one of the best tacklers in the game. Yeah. I remember doing a story with um, Trevor Gilmeister, 
last year or the year before, he rated clearing the top five defensive mm. players in the game, like overall. Mm. Yeah. And and I thought the other thing about Cleary the other day with Jerome Luai um, missing was I think Adam Reynolds didn't have a run in the game other than that intercept late mm. like that, but, but he played so well. But... But Cleary was playing conductor and ball runner, and yeah. his, his stats were enormous. Like he ran for nearly a hundred meters, I think, and he he had tackle bust, he had try assists, he had a try. Like it, it, for mine, watching him the other night, as he was so far ahead of everyone else mm. on the field, I thought it was almost like um, watching Andrew Johns in the 2005 origin series he was it was just a clinic mm. Mm. and he's 25 years of age and honest to god he's up with the great halfbacks do you reckon everyone's been speaking and justifiably so about how great dce's been this year cherry mm. evans has been had a, a really yeah. good season at 34 years of age it's almost like nathan clear has gone all right oh, challenge accepted and his game <laughs> has been tremendous yeah you know, they're just yeah, yeah. i and, think um uh Nathan is such a student of the game that I think, you know, obviously he thinks about, I guess, you know, guys like DCE and wanting to wind them up a little bit. But I think, you know, he's the type of person where it's like Cleary v Cleary. You know, how can I be better than in the next week? And, um, you know, we hear Ivan talk about it a lot. His teammates talk about it a lot. Like he leaves no stone unturned in, in preparing um, for every single game. And you can see it with, you know, with how he plays. And mm. so it's very easy to forget that when he first came through first grade, he he was a shadow of the of the player that he is at the moment. It's not like he came through as this, you know, teenage prodigy. And, um, yeah, it's been, you know, the way that his game has grown has been amazing. And I think, you know, and, and then you look at the, you know, Warriors as well. Sean Johnson, um, Andrew Webster said, yes, uh, on the weekend that he's expecting that Sean Johnson, or at least highly confident that Sean Johnson will be back. And like, if any of those teams are going to do anything, it is going to be on the back of their number seven. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I think, you know, going back to, you know, who I thought was probably the best performer of the of the first week, I would say the Broncos, but the Panthers are a clear second. Mm, um, I need to get your thoughts on this because... I saw it and I couldn't believe they did it. The the, the Panthers social media no. team. No, are we going to talk about this? Oh. Are, are you on the which which side of the? Well, are you on the outrage let's, let's, train? So the New Zealand Warriors have spent three years <laughs> travelling, living away, yep. h- holding up the game, keeping the game alive by living away from their family. Yep. Feel good story of the year. <laughs> the catch cry is up the was. Up the was. It's been that all year. I was trying to explain the crawls what up the was was um, <laughs> before the yeah. podcast. So. And then and then they come up with, oh, you know what? Up the pars. No, hold on. Penrith didn't actually come up with it. They, they didn't so put it on their social media. They did put uh, it on their yeah. social media, but the up the pars song to the tune of the How mm. Bizarre yeah. song um, actually went viral during the week on TikTok. Yeah. So I think some fan came up with a song it's a little bit catchy. But the, the point um, the point of the matter is and then, yes, they you're then... the NRL team and you've, <laughs> you've had questions about your respect or maybe sometimes lack of with the way that you treat the opposition. Mm. Then the feel-good story of the year, you sit there and stick the knife oh, in a little bit on that. Yeah, it's it's to me it's fun, it's banter, mm. you know, like... Well, don't, don't sit there and wonder why people don't like you if that's... The, you know, Matt Cameron's come out and apologised. Yeah. He didn't see it go up, but... Mm. Oh, for all the good work that they're doing, we've just been waxing lyrical about how great they are on the field, and, now, then and that the kind thing, of thing no, just I don't know. irks Look, me. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm assu- not assuming, but you know, we constantly hear about you know how the game's going soft and the rest of it, and it's probably the same types of people who are all of a sudden offended about this social media post that's supposed to be a bit of fun. Um, what's but wrong there with was a bit players of banter? Like Joel Thompson in your story, like Joel Thompson was. Offended yeah, he's entitled by- to his mm-hmm. opinion. I just don't think it was that like overly offensive. Like even the grand final celebration of you know james fisher harrod saying para are our, our, our sons and the rest of it those two clubs really deep down do not like each other you know it's just adds we talk about theater all the time it just adds to the theater but you know and it's funny you talk about feel-good stories right and i get that and the warriors absolutely are penrith were once upon a time the feel-good story you know like remember back in 2020 and but because they've been so successful they're potentially about to play in four grand finals in a row they've gone from being the feel-good story to the new Manly, can we say that? The team that everybody, you know, I don't think so. likes I think to hate. That, but um, I, when I look at it, like there's so many wonderful things about the Panthers. There mm. really is. You know, the, the performances on the field and their ability to be so clinical. But mm. it's, it's moments like this and moments like, you know, 
what's his name, Stephen Crichton, when he pulled Joe Topine into their mm. group and these mm. just these little incidents along the way that do upset rival fans. And I think back to when the Roosters were, were, were at their champion best and they won back-to-back competition, the, the thing that I really loved about the Roosters was their their humility and their, their mm. humbleness and the, the way that they... They, they played with class. Mm. They reacted with class. And I just think that the Penrith can learn a lesson from this. The fact that they took the post down and Matt Cameron mm. came out and mm. apologised, you'd like to see the players take that on board because it's the only thing, I think, that some fans, a lot of fans, take exception to. Mm. Just a little bit of grace and humility would be nice. Yeah. Well, I don't, uh, yeah, it's it's... Yeah, and maybe I'm being biased here. So, you know, I have spent a lot of time covering um, covering the Panthers. So you get to know the players, you know, as, as on a personal level. And, you know, people say that they're arrogant. And then, you know, when you know them on a personal level, you don't necessarily see that arrogance. You see that they are, you know, just humble guys that are literally living out their best lives. And, and they're, winning, they're winning footy games, a lot of footy games, you know, like winners – earn the right to celebrate and everybody else just, I guess, has to suck it up. Mm, yeah. I, I, the only thing that got me was the, f- you know, you, as I said before, the they are the team that's gone through the most the last few years, the Warriors. You know, you, you, off mm. the field, you, you can't argue that and this has been that cash cow. I didn't quite get that. But, you know, <laughs> you, you look at, it's funny though because, you know, I might be a bit of a hypocrite. I did laugh when, um, when was it Crichton that scored the other week and turned around and pointed back to... Um, Scott Drinkwater after Drinkwater did the same to Dylan Edwards when they won yeah. earlier this season. So yeah. I get the banter and, you know... I but, but, but that he, Drinkwater made himself fair game because oh, he, yeah. he brought that one up. He brought mm. that one on himself. When he did it mm. against Dylan Edwards. And yeah. so on this occasion, it was payback and mm. it was obviously a motivation yeah. for yeah. the Panthers. I see that as a little bit mm. different. Yeah. 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 You know, I just... See, and, and you're right, Fatima, there's so many good stories out there and this and the way that they they, they just aim up season after season and it's one of the the great sides in rugby league mm. history, mm. I just think a little bit of dignity there mm. is all it needs. Yeah. Because it, it's it, it's it's true. When the Roosters were winning and when they were a great team, there was a humility about them that sort of you admired. Mm. Yeah. And, and you couldn't help but admire, even when you thought that they had this team that was, you know... How do they get all those stars into one salary cap and everything like that? There was still humility and then they didn't go and jump over each other when they scored tries. Like Tedesco scores a try, he puts the ball down, he walks back. Yeah. You know, but they play, two pose the same. It was just yeah, like, but that's I like the joy, that That's the joy that these Panthers players play with. You know, they've spent years playing with each other, coming through the grades. Now they're, you know, winning premierships at NRL level. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually still think there is some humility about them. It's just, you know, they've got – some of them have big personalities and that's what we want. That's what we want to see. And, you know, just because, you know, those personalities might rub people the wrong way, I don't think that means they should sort of change how they go about their no business. No one's asking them to change. It's the occasional moments. It's this, mm. like Mobsy said. Mm. It's this moment. It's the topine moment. It's mm. it's these, you know, these speckles along the way that leave the bad taste. Overall, yeah. you know, the rest of it, the celebrations and the enjoyment and everything, mm. great stuff. Yeah. And look, no, everyone gets, you're not going to get it right 100% of the time. I, I watched the game from 500 metres down the road from Penrith Park at the weekend, went out with a couple of friends and, um, and the stream of Panthers and Warriors fans coming from the station towards the ground and the vibe afterwards around Penrith, mm. they were just, everyone just gets so excited and for a team that's, you know, they, they just, they, they're loving it at the moment because people out in the Western Sydney are used to getting picked on by the city slickers, everyone, <laughs> everyone here, you know, the Russell Jacksons of the world who are in the Sydney Eastern <laughs> suburbs. So it's nice to see them be that way and be as, you know, as, you know, can only envy them from living out that way. It's just a horrible a time a to of, be a uh, Panther, the, an Eels fan out yeah, there. Yeah, it's a bit of envy, I think. And that's mm. why they probably, you know, are the target of everybody's, you know, outrage when certain things happen. Mm-hmm. Righto. Well, that's a good episode. That was solid. A lot to talk about. We've only got mm. two games next week. What the hell are we going to do? Always find something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing though? Like, there's always something. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Even with, yeah. It, we didn't need a bite allegation. We haven't even touched on a social media post of mm. a certain Cowboys yeah. player because <laughs> for legal reasons we'll just ignore that one. But 
You're right, there's always something to talk about. So, right out. Well, thanks for stopping by. That's really good. We'll do all again on Thursday and be back again next Monday with you guys.